Hi, Bob here, working on an ICOM IC746 Pro. And uh, I bought this uh, just a few days ago on uh, eBay. It arrived uh, yesterday. And I've got it sitting here on top of my box at the workbench so that I can work on it standing up. Got about four or five inches of new snow outside. And this is a really neat thing to do today, do some ham radio stuff. And uh, I've been fascinated with the features of the IC746 Pro. I bought this one as a parts unit from a fellow on eBay by the name of Chris. And seems like a real nice guy. I've done some uh, messaging back and forth with him. So the first thing I did was what I call an RAR. And the RAR is... Excuse my bouncing around, I'm using a handheld camera. RAR stands for Run As Received. So uh, I plugged it in and checked it out. And it was doing exactly what Chris said. Yeah, everything works except there's no audio. As you can see right here, there's a signal coming in right now. That signal's coming from the WaveTech signal generator right over here. It's set exactly on 7 megahertz. And it's set for a hundred, a hundred microvolts, is it? I believe. Anyhow, it's got a pretty good signal. <laughs> it's this minus 70 uh, dBm, and I got the meter up full scale. So it's a good signal. And you can see that it's coming in here. This is the S meter reading right here. So I, uh, I checked out the speaker system first, the speaker wiring. There's a uh, plug back here for the speaker, right right in here. Plug here for the speaker. This breaks often, or it breaks loose from the board. And so when I read about this on uh, eBay, and the description that it had no sound on receive, I thought, ah, it's got to be that little connector back there. Well, it wasn't. What I did was I took my Simpson 260 ohm meter, put it on R times 1, and connected it to this little cable here, which goes through to the other side, where the audio amplifier is. And then I tapped my Simpson 260 probes on the connector. Now the connector is so tiny it's very difficult to get those little <laughs> get, get this those those probes into that little connector, but I did find that on the back I could squeeze them in. And when I did that, when you connect the Simpson meter to a speaker uh, on R times 1, that's a good speaker test then you get a click in the speaker and uh, it would also read the resistance of the speaker which is in this case is close to 8 ohms so I thought okay we're okay from that point from the audio board down there to here so then the next thing I started to do is I started to uh, poke around and I had a pencil here that I was using for my poking which I don't see now. I've been cleaning the place up a little bit and I just took the pencil and put it away. Here we are. So I take the pencil and I start poking around to see if anything is loose. And I poke at parts and uh, I poke on the board and I poke and I poke and I poke and I hit this thing here and I heard a beep because I'm feeding a signal in there and I hear a beep and I checked with the generator and by golly I did it again and it was it was uh, picking up the generator so the receivers working the audios working but for some reason it's not getting where it belongs and so uh, I got poking and poking and poking and I poked at this well it's not as reactive as it was every time I hit it it was po it was doing something there we go there we are. Well, what that tells me at this point right now, you can find a lot of things by poking around like that. The next step would have been for me to take the... Uh, I'm reaching over here across the cabinet. Would have been for me to take the electronics duster. <laughs> 
I've also got a container of actual freeze mist. This duster is the same thing as freeze mist. Did you know that? You can buy these things for a dollar at the dollar store. I paid $16 for a container of freeze mist. And what you do with the freeze mist is you spray it on the parts. It's got a little nozzle, plastic nozzle, and you spray it right on a part, like this little relay right here, or this capacitor. And if it's, if it's temperature sensitive, and a lot of them are, when they go out, then you will find the bad part. So anyhow, which, what I do is I spray a rather large area, like this right in here, there's a whole bunch of little parts here. I spray an area like that with the freeze mist, and it's, if, it, if it starts working, I got a temperature sensitive part in there. Then I go to the individual little parts and I squeeze that freeze mist just very gently and put a little drop on each one of the parts until I hit the one that's sensitive and then I replace that one. So, so the next thing I did, checking this out, uh, I thought maybe it might be in this connector right here. Uh, these are better than some of the others I see in other rigs. These, these are more sturdy and these are, are a better quality. Uh, I, I pulled this out, cleaned it with the pencil eraser, played with it, and I thought maybe it was in there. Nothing happened, but that's a good place to look, and also on the other end, right up in here. So then I got to, to playing with this, and I pushed it, and I heard a beep, like that. So that's where the problem is. Now this has got a connector underneath here that pushes into the main board, which is the main board here. And it has a connector here. It's got a wider one here and a, a narrower one here, so you can't get it in backwards. I'm not certain. I haven't checked, but I think this is the, uh, oh, what do they call it? It's the uh, filtering, and I can't think of the name of it right now. But anyhow, it's the, it's the uh, filtering module. Uh, for selecting different filter widths and things like that and digital signal processing. That's it. Digital signal processing module. Anyhow, I'm fairly certain that one of the pins on this end of that is not soldered to the board. It's cracked. The solder is cracked. Maybe due to temperature, or maybe due to shock and vibration, or maybe due to the fact that it was never soldered properly in the first place. So it could be on the board, and it could be on the connector that's on this module. Well, the module looks to me like I just take this cover off, I can get in there. So next thing I'm going to do is take that cover off, and then I'm going to solder all those pins. Now I'll come down here and solder these too and examine them with a very high power magnifier. This is a lens out of a 35 millimeter film projector that was tossed in the trash. And wow does it make a nice magnifier for looking for things like that. So I keep that handy. Anyway that's what I'm going to do and then uh, we'll go on to segment two or part two of repairing the IC746 Pro. I do not have the manual on this yet. I've got the manual on the 746, but not the Pro. So uh, I have been going to uh, ICOM on the internet, and they, is it ICOM that has it? There is a website that has the 746 Pro manual on there, and you can go to it. And I just did a search for ICOM 746 Pro uh, service manual on Google and up it came. I brought it up and looked at the circuits and I'll tell you it's involved. There is a whole bunch of circuits in the audio uh, for all that digital signal processing. So it's quite complex in that regard but we know where it's at. It's right in there. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to take care of that. So with that, why uh, this is the part one of this uh, repair. So uh, we'll dig into it further here, and I'll make another report and another uh, another part of this video series. 73s and keep warm. <laughs> Good dick, DX. This is Bob out.